The focus of this video is to show how to manage areas along a corridor between areas of cut and areas of fill. I have a horizontal geometry element here and it does have an active profile so I'm going to go in and create a corridor for this geometry. So I'll locate the corridor baseline, reset for the active profile, give that a name. I'm going to place a template so I'll select Alt and Down and I'm going to pick this two-lane rule template. I'll accept that. I'm going to press the Alt key to lock to start and again the Alt key to lock to the end. Set my template drop interval to 20 and I'll leave both the start and stop transitions at zero. Okay, so you can see the corridor gets placed with the cut and fill lines shown here. I'm going to go in and change one of the properties on the corridor. I want to set the design stage to final linear features. Before we analyze this corridor, let me turn off the construction elements so it'll be a little bit easier to see what's going on. So you can see on the right side of the corridor, I have one continuous line, which is my construction limit. But on the left side of the corridor, I have some areas where the line is disjointed. And if you zoom in just a little bit, you can see that this feature is left cut. And this feature is a fill feature. And then you go back to cut. You've got a similar situation here where you go from an area of cut to an area of fill. And between these two areas, there is a gap between the cut and the fill. So the question is, why is this side working just fine and this side has these gaps? The answer to this lies within the template itself. So let's go in and take a look at the template that we are using to create this and it's this two-lane rule. Now the first thing you may notice is that the point names on the left side are in white and the point names on the right side are in red. This indicates that the right side is using what we call a feature name override. So if I click on one of these points and select edit point you can see here we are using this feature name override that is toggled on. You can see if I toggle that off that it turns to white. So let's leave that on. Now let's look on the left side here and you can see that there are no feature name overrides. So what we want to do is go in and use these feature name overrides to create one continuous feature along the left side of our corridor, which represents both the cut and the fill. This use feature name override option will allow you to define a feature name that will be created in the corridor that corresponds to this point. So we can toggle this on and then we can type in anything we want here. So let's call this left limit of construction click apply and you can see that now turns to red which indicates that it does have a feature name override. Now I'm going to copy this and I'm going to make the same change to all of the cut in conditions as well as the fill in conditions on the left side. So I'm going to move through these pretty quickly each time I'm just pasting in that name.
Just have a couple more here. Okay, so now all of these fill in conditions and cut in conditions are sharing the same feature name override, which means that the feature that is created corresponding to each of these points will have the same name, therefore they're going to be connected. So let me go ahead and save this template. We can close out of this. Let me turn my construction elements back on. And what we want to do now is go back in and synchronize the template. So we'll use the synchronize template command. I'm prompted to locate the template drop. And when I do that, you can see that the corridor updates. Again, I'll turn off the construction elements. And you can see now that this entire cut and fill line is one feature named left limit of construction.